the name, the, the alliteration, Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle was, I think everybody's hero. Transcendent ball player. Mickey Mantle was a household name. The face of baseball. The epitome of what an athletic person should look like. But what mom would always say, that you know, he just looked baseball. And he just looked like an athlete. Almost a natural composition of a baseball player. He hit the ball 500 foot every time. Every time he plays, he, he'll do something spectacular. That's what a great baseball player should be like. And this is the man that most represented the Yankees. So I've seen a lot of great sluggers. There was nobody in my mind who could do it in a ball game greater than Mickey Mantle. Mantle connects with a terrific wallop deep into the left field stands for a home run. From the time that he announced his arrival with two titanic blasts that he hit in spring training of 1951, opposing pitches garnered a deep-seated respect for the power that Mickey Mantle generated as he uncoiled his violent swing. No fan in the park at the time wanted to be away from their seat when Mickey stepped into the batter's box for fear that they might miss a moment in history waiting for the ball to be hit out of Yankee Stadium for the first time. The magnificent Yankee, the great number seven, Mickey Mantle. Here's the playoff pitch. This is it! Baseball was real good to me, and playing 18 years in the Yankee Stadium for you folks is the best thing that could ever happen to a ball player. Growing up in Commerce, Oklahoma, Mickey Mantle's labor in the copper mines developed an athlete who displayed some of the greatest natural strength that the game has ever seen. But back then, he was considered the strongest guy. Mickey didn't lift weights, but he was just blessed with this body that had muscles all over it. Big, powerful shoulders, big, powerful body. Mickey's neck, uh, people say he had no neck. If you look at some of the pictures of when Dad would swing, I mean, you'd even see the neck muscles and ju just, I think every muscle in his body helped him hit those home runs so long. But my dad, I mean, his forearms was, was what got me. You've heard people call him Popeye arms. He was a natural looking Ameri great American athlete. He was a brute. He was a tremendous physical specimen. He just looked like a, like a baseball player. Or he, could, or he could have looked like a football player too. Just plain strength. I mean, he was a strong young man. I remember him coming back and throwing his helmet down the runway and walking by and he found the, the four spot where his bats were and he just took his hand and grabbed the handle of the bat and just broke it off. And I went, oh my goodness, I've never seen strength like that. Strength that brought a new element to the game of baseball, even in batting practice. Oh, it was a show. Batting practice, you loved it. He, he stopped everything. And the other teams, they would just they came out to watch Dad take batting practice because they just wanted to see how many he had hit out then. And during batting practice, of course, the ballpark is very uh, empty. When Mickey would get hold of one, the sound was, was explosive. Obviously, the main thing was his prodigious power. The ability to have that power from both sides of the plate, nobody else in baseball has ever had. There was nothing as intimidating as seeing the Mick kneeling in the on-deck circle studying the pitcher. The male got in the arm deck circle. The buzz started. And I've spoken to many of the rival pitchers from that era who would say, you couldn't really focus when you saw Mickey Mantle there. You never saw him at the plate when you didn't think he could hit a home run, <laughs> which must have been an enormous pressure on a pitcher. Because even if he's not going to hit a home run, just the thought that he might can make you pitch differently. Every time to the plate, you expected that he was not only going to hit one out of the park, but hit one further than you've ever seen before. I think that was a lot of his mystique. You know, everybody just expected him to hit a 
you know, a moonshot home run every time. I mean, you always had the anticipation that he might hit the ball out of a stadium or hit, hit a home run to distances you never imagined anybody could reach. I don't even think he knew how he did it. He just got up there and he just tried to kill it every time. And of course, a lot of times he did. <laughs> and of course, the mighty Mickey Mantle, baseball's most dangerous switch hitter. Boom! Mantle belts it over the fence in right field. I thought he was by far the greatest all-around hitter I'd ever seen. People would even tell me still that they can remember just the sound of the ball coming off the bat. So it didn't matter whether he was batting left-handed or right-handed, he could hit the ball, you know, beyond the, the confines of the field. And with the short right field porch in Yankee Stadium and that inviting upper deck, wow, that was just tailor-made for a guy like him. Going, going, a home run for the Yankees' great slugger. The things he people don't remember about him that when you were a Yankee fan like I was that followed just about every game is how fast he was going down to first base. I don't know by how much his batting average is boosted by the bunch that he beat out. Mickey ran to first base with world-class speed. His speed in the outfield, incredible ability to catch balls. Quickly learned to play center field like an artist. He was brought up as a shortstop. Good outfielder, good defensive player. I don't remember him ever really making an error. His outfield play was incredible. He always seemed to know to go after a ball. Don Lawson's perfect game. He ran into left center field and caught a ball back at me. But that was just one play, man. Get that every day. So when it came to versatility, Mantle was number one. The Mick was a five-tool athlete, but to witness some of his home runs, most of which were truly prodigious clouds, was a spectacle to watch. Bob Wolf, the pioneer TV voice of the Washington Senators, called Mantle's infamous home run on April 17, 1953, at Griffith Stadium. That tape measure shot that Mickey hit was unbelievable. First of all, I nor anybody else had ever seen one hit out of Griffith Stadium. But one thing I'm sure of, this was not the usual towering home run, because this was a line drive went out like a golf tee shot, low to the ground, escalating just a bit, then clearing it. And my reaction is, wow, did you see that? That ball went over the fence. It was the first to be so called a tape measure home run. Red Patterson, the PR director, allegedly walked it off and determined the length. You know, that started the tape measure home runs, really more or less, was that home run. That was the first time that people started talking about the actual footage, how long a home run was. It was always a, uh, uh, you know, a rush to pick up the newspapers the next day to find out how long a home run he had hit. And of course, everybody read about the shot that almost went out of Yankee Stadium on May 30th in 1956. It was the first time a ball had ever struck the facade. But Pete Ramos let fly with a pitch one day and Mantle, who was now batting left-handed, hit one in which I had never seen before. This was ascending. It was going up, up, up. Will it make it? Will it go over the roof? As soon as it left the bat, you knew it was out. Uh, that ball was just a, a line shot that went higher and higher and higher, like a plane taking off and it wouldn't come back. It hit just before going over on the facade, about 18 inches away. I remember that home run. I remember going up there several times to see how far away from home plate it was. It wasn't so much that far away, it was that high. It was ridiculously high. Seven years later, Mickey wowed the fans once again. The fact that it was a walk-off homer was an afterthought. If the ball had cleared the facade, it very well could have been the longest home run of his career. Now, no one has ever hit a fair ball out, out of Yankee Stadium. And I was there the day he almost hit the home run out of the stadium with Bill Fisher. But this one went up like a rocket and hit the upper edge of the, uh, that fancy facade that rung the stadium. And that was the only thing that stopped it. Everybody, like even me, I wish it had gone just a little bit over to the left. And I do remember that uh, on the radio, they were saying that the trajectory of the ball had not hit the top of the arc when it hit the facade. He said that home run was his most, the hardest hit ball he ever hit. If 
the trajectory was just a few inches higher, Mickey Mantle would have been the first person to hit a ball out of Yankee Stadium fair. Mickey Mantle's 18 World Series home runs are a major league record. Perhaps his most notable fall classic blast came against the Cardinals in 1964 with the game tied in the bottom of the ninth. I didn't know this at the time. He predicted he was going to hit one because he always hit knuckleballs well. He came up in the bottom of the ninth. And even though a lot of people say it was a tailor-made Yankee Stadium home run, it was hit. And as soon as it left the bat, you knew it was gone. I knew the game was over. The one thing I'll never forget is looking at number seven's locker and seeing all those bandages. He would bandage both legs, not one leg. His last big season, he was only 32 years old. Imagine how the career could have played out if he'd been able to play at a high level into his late 30s or early 40s. He might have had 800 all months. We'll never know. And I think when a player plays hurt, and you realize how painful his playing was, it takes on even more heroic status. I think that was part of the leadership that he created for the Yankees. He'll do whatever it takes for the team to win. But the thing that I admired, I guess, the most about Mickey as a, as a player and as a teammate that he was like a quiet leader. If you were a young player when you first came up, the first guy that came to you in spring training was Mickey and said, hey, let's go out, I'm gonna buy you dinner. And, and he befriended you, he wanted you to be a part of the team immediately. I got kind of nervous anticipating walking in that clubhouse for the first time. And I never shall forget, Mickey was one of the first guys that I met. Hi Fritz, I'm Mickey Mantle. How you doing? I said, oh, hi, Mr. Man. He said, no, it's Mickey Mantle. And it just showed him uh, being the perfect teammate. But Mickey made me feel at home. Five minutes in that locker room, I knew that I had made the right decision to be a Yankee. That was what he said. He only wanted to be remembered as a great teammate. You know, I don't want to be remembered for the long home runs, you know, or any of that. I want to be remembered for being a good teammate. Now, Mick was one of the greatest Yankees of all time, and uh, I'll never forget him. Mickey Mantle was the greatest ball player to ever play the game. I've been a baseball fan all my life. Mickey Mantle was the best. I mean, all these things factored into what made him what he is. He, you know, he was just, he was a star, and, and he had that aura about him. He had a popularity that was unrivaled, and a love that was unrivaled, and it was all well-deserved. He came through as the man he wanted to be. Terrific human being. The magnificent Yankee, the great number seven, Mickey Mantle. The place was just packed, just filled. When he went up there and there was loads of applause and he was standing on the mound. And I remember him saying that, you know, people could wonder uh, how a man who was dying could stand here and say that he was the luckiest man in the world. But now I think I know how Lou Gehrig felt. And of course, the, the place just burst into huge cheers. 